I can't find she's in at first, but eventually she walks into the main part of the house, sipping a glass of ice water and dangling her glasses back and forth from her free hand. She whips him on as soon as she sees me. You didn't rescue Hideaki. That means you didn't get the extra bonus points. If you're also being graded on style, I'd also... Uh, I'd have to uh, uh, put points for a boring escape. It looked like you wanted to talk to me. I didn't know I had to be stylish about it. No, some say that most stylish people are the ones that don't try too hard to look cool. You're really... Uh, what, what? You're really cool. I wonder how it is that I can pick up on her sarcasm so easily and how hard it might have been for her to learn the concept of sarcasm without being able to hear her. I can't imagine it. Well, you can tell it was a sarcastic comment simply based on her facial expression. You seem like you're in a good mood. Although I guess it isn't really a good mood, it's more that she seems very excited. I'm in a bad mood. Setting her a drink down, she then sits down on the couch. I liked her regular hairstyle so much more. It looked so pretty, it was refined and meticulous. Now she looks too sporty and tomboyish. I wouldn't call Misha refined and meticulous. That sounds more like you. You should give it a chance, grow your hair out and make it look like drills. Hmm, actually, maybe this suits you just fine. So they rub the frame of her glasses, roughly looking annoyed at the implications behind what I just signed to her. That's fine, because I was totally implying that. She moves a little close to me when I take a seat. I'm a tomboy. Well, no one would call you a tomboy, based on appearances. She then glares at me, unamused, have to fight to keep a straight face. Maybe you two should trade haircuts anyway. You sound like my father. It's true, Shizune giggles noisily when she sees my displeasure at the realization. Jumping to her feet, she twirls an invisible sword in her left hand while standing up militarily, uh, straight and grimacing, a terrifyingly accurate impression. Anyway, I don't take advice from anyone who wears a blue sweater with brown pants. Where's their sense of color coordination? Dreadful. But changing my haircut, that would be fun, wouldn't it be? I want to see how everyone would react. You must really like playing with people. Sometimes I think a little too much. No answer, the way she fiddles with her glasses, brow furrow tells me that it's because she can't. It's fun. Then, with more confidence and while pulling herself close to me, it's fun to drag more and more people into my life. Oh, I see. I wonder if I'm including that number. I want to ask, but uh, I'm not even sure how I would. Sunny wags her finger, preemptively indicating that she won't be answering such a question anyway. She reaches for her glass, but doesn't seem to realize how far she's managed to inch away from it all this time. To prevent herself from tipping her over clumsily, she tries to grab onto me and ends up pulling me on top of her. Oh, how compromising would this be if her dad walks in? As I lean over her, I can feel the heat coming off her body and realize how close we are. I can hear her soft breathing and the slight rustling of her clothes as she momentarily fidgets about. A blush starts to creep into her cheeks, but her eyes stare straight into mine, dark and unblinking. Is it just me, or does her... does that just look a bit odd here? I know, it feels like... I don't know, shape, maybe a bit more shading, I don't know. Whatever. It's the same look from the first time I saw her, piercing in the void of any clear emotions, just waiting to see what will happen next. Like the eyes of a cat, it makes me feel uncomfortable being looked at in such a way. This is the first time I've been so close to her for an extended period of time, and the mood is different now. The situation now isn't the same as a passing touching of hands or her and Misha's usual games. Today's fingers weave together tentatively, but she makes no move to sign. The look in her eyes isn't just nothing like I thought. It's more like expectation. I wonder if maybe I've been following the string of her expectations this entire time. I feel her grabbing me by the shoulder and then gently but firmly pushing me off of her. I roll sideways onto the soft couch and bow myself into a sitting position less than a foot away from her. The way I feel, she might as well have thrown me ten yards. When I think about it, this is perhaps one of the biggest drawbacks to sign language. She only said that the fact that you have to sign your words out with your hands means you have time to reflect on what you say before you say But on the other hand, it also means that what would normally just be an awkward silence becomes an insurmountable wall. 
I'd just blurt out something, anything, to try and dispel attention. I feel it right now if I could, but I can't. Ordinarily, I think that what would be normal would be to apologize and maybe leave. But right now, I wonder if that is even acceptable. I can't get past how guilty such an action would seem, like I would just slink away. Of course, it's not like I can just play it off like nothing happened either. That would just be insulting to both of us, so as much as I don't want to, I apologize quickly so I quickly I forget the sight. Then I go back to my room. You idiot! So he apologized, but he didn't sign it. Sighing, I let myself fall backwards into bed. I wish I could just go to sleep right now, but I feel wide awake. Ah, uh, freaking tell me about it, man. It always happens, man. When you're trying to sleep, your mind just won't shut the fuck off so you can freaking sleep. I sit up when I hear the door closing and open my eyes as he's in there sitting in the chair in front of me. She asks a question that goes right over my head due to my surprise. It's not a feel that I'm good at concealing, and I don't think it's what she intended. Right if she was saying, she backs off and doesn't attempt to sign again for a while. This is the first time I've been in your room. What? But this is her house. So they tense her fingers and but saw an unexaggerated attempt to make herself look embarrassed and modest at the fort. I can't appreciate the joke, just the fact that she's here has me feeling a bit scattered. Very funny, this isn't even my room, it's her guest room. Besides, you and me should barge into my room once before. It seems as if she expects me to say more. I remember feeling very panicked when they burst into my room, afraid of what conclusions they would jump to seeing the wall of pills lining the place. I don't think that she any remembers though. It made you nervous. The way she says it so effectually stings me. A lot of things make me nervous. Yeah, you're one of them. Because you're over eager to always get people involved in whatever you're doing, whether it's joining the student council or even taking a break, whether they want to or not. She signs almost at a crawl, her hands pausing mid sentence far too much, causing the words to dissipate formlessly before I can even begin to try to understand them. I try not to let on, eh, uh, let on that this is the case. It seems to work, but she looks a little sad. I regret that I have nothing to say to snap her at her from the strangely wistful and distant expression she is wearing. All I could do is wait for her to come out of it. You're right, I want to drag everyone into my life, but lately I'm no longer sure if it's the right thing to do. I enjoyed you taking me to your favorite restaurant the other night. It's not like that was my favorite restaurant. I have others I like. I might even be able to rank them by number. Really? This chair is so hot, I want to sit on the bed. Motioning to her to go ahead, I wait for her to get off the chair and take her place when she does. Though I didn't intend for it to be, she finds it amusing. Close your eyes. Why? It's a surprise. I decide to hit her and close them. I can feel her leaning over me, and suddenly something soft and moist touches my lips. My body tenses up in surprise. Fortunately, not as awkward a reaction as I could have made. It was just a quick peck, and I almost think that's the end of it, but then she kissed me again, more deeply this time. Wait. Her hands slide onto my shoulders, up to my neck, and then back down again, and then across my shoulders and down my arms. It can't be. This soon? I can feel the weight of her body on my legs, and the eroticism of the situation isn't lost on me. At this point, I'm ready to try and open my eyes just for crack, but as if expecting it, she puts her fingers on my eyelids and pokes his eyes out. Seconds later, something ties my hands together at the wrists and I panic. Not knowing what to make of this, my first thought is to ask Shizune what she's thinking. Even though she can't hear me, I'm sure she gets the gist of it. Or maybe I think this could potentially be one of those cases where it's like a kind of Psych! It's not gonna be one of those scenes, it's just for playing her games again. I don't know where this is gonna go. She won't let go of my hands, tracing her fingers over them, from the lines of my palms over my knuckles and to my wrists. Uh, hey, what are you doing? What's this? <laughs> What's this indeed? Of course, with my hands tied behind my back, I might as well be gagged. Part of me can't help but think that this is what she intended. 
As if reading my thoughts, a mischievous expression lights up her face, but her blushing doesn't fade. In fact, it only deepens when our eyes meet. Now, this is the music that usually plays in those scenes, or at least the music that leads into it. Embarrassed, she leans deeper into our partial embrace, hiding her face by burying it in my shoulder and neck. Her hair is soft and tickles me, and I let out a laugh, knowing that she won't hear me, won't be offended. So his hands move downward to... Yep, it's happening. <laughs> Off screening! Hang on a moment. Yeah, flash around, show me the business kind of real. I don't know well enough that kind of attitude could be just a dangerous if it is, or whether what kind of person that makes me. Maybe her hands might have been for more reasons than just the most obvious. It was probably the first. Uh, it was probably the first week I was here. A week doesn't sound so long when I think about it. At the time it did, even though I pretty much thought it so that my days were numbered. That week it uh, still seemed to go by slowly. Bye so slowly. Even if she can't hear me, it puts me at ease. I started to realize that I didn't have that much to complain about, but there's still... Well, never mind. She glances at me for no reason other than that I'm talking. Because she can't understand what I'm saying, Shizune becomes increasingly flustered. She doesn't sign anything in reply. So, is it going to go into one of those scenes or not? I mean, it seems likely, but... I'll keep re- No, 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 actually, I just read that, so, uh, yeah. It's happening, so, off-screening. You know, this scene is really weird, I gotta say. Because <laughs> it's kind of brief, and it has bits of, like, detail of the plot and all that. So, instead of getting up, she presses herself against me in the chair to extend her reach. It's almost as if this is the only position she can think to untie my hands from. This is what I think as I feel her unbinding my wrists. However, she doesn't get off me. Her fingers gently stroke against mine, occasionally bending inwards to run over my palms. It's funny, but I feel more connected to Shizune through this simple act than before. Shizune stays pressed against me like this for some time. It's a little uncomfortable, but it makes me feel happy as if I should, if I could stay like this for hours. And that's all? No awkward after that scene or anything? As far as those scene CGs go, that one was pretty tame, because it didn't actually, you know, nothing visible. So really, whatever. The days since then have passed so quickly that time seems to slip through my fingers like water. Every time I've tried to talk with Shizune, she has been out running errands or with Misha. I feel as if she's avoided me. Well, it, well that was a pretty, you know, awkward scene. I'm not surprised, of course, it bothers me, but I think the way she's acting seems pretty natural. And again, it's not like I've been through this before. Man, that's just... That's weird. Whenever I can't find Shizune, well, whenever I can't find Shizune, I end up running into Misha. And when I do, I ask her to help me with my signing. However, she always ends up squirming out of it. We're leaving after the day, so I'm determined not to let her escape this time. So they're finally going back then. Finally. <laughs> Once we head back to school, we're probably going to have to start riding through more student council affairs in preparation for school or starting. I want to brush up on my signing as much as possible by then, even if it's a day's worth. Come on, it's pretty much just having a couple of sign language conversations. You do that all the time. Actually, you're doing it right now. Haha, <laughs> really, Hee-chan, that's funny. Major Temporarily stops her unconscious signing in order to wave her hands in front of her face in denial. But then quickly resumes, gesturing everything the both of us are saying to no one in particular. Hee-chan, you're so persistent. Suddenly being interested in sign language again. Could be that Hee-chan wants to make a career out of it. That's not fair. That was my idea first. You should be careful, Hee-chan. Times change too quickly. By the time I decided I wanted to be a sign language interpreter, they had cell phones that people could type out whole paragraphs on. Amazing. Not very good for me, though. As if she knows that another 
If it really isn't going to cut it this time, Misha changed her tune pretty quickly to a more apologetic one. Sorry, he chan I'm just so tired, especially lately, even though being with she chans fun. She has way more energy than me. Teaching on top of that would be too tiring. I don't have that much stamina, sorry. She doesn't seem very tired, shouting the statement with her usual cheer and vigor. I know it's wrong of me to keep uh, festering her like this, though. Actually, Chi Chen and I were planning on going shopping today. It's our last chance to pick up some souvenirs. Will it be on screen this time? Souvenirs, huh? I almost forgot that I was on vacation. I understand what he's saying. Teaching doesn't seem so easy. Hideaki asked me to teach him how to sign, and I was unbelievably lost all the time. Well, I wonder how it'll work out for you when you become a sign language teacher. You can't get tired too easily doing that. Yeah, right, right, I hope not. Hee Chan, now I'm kind of worried, but souvenirs, so, so I'm all the time, Hee Chan. <laughs> you want us to get you something, too? Just because I understand doesn't mean I don't want her to teach me. I suppose I can press her any fool now, though. Even not bothered by how selfish it would seem to do so. What you want? No, oh, don't, uh, don't get me anything. I'm serious. Don't surprise me with a funny shirt or something, okay? <laughs> that, that's a different type of laughter, usual, isn't it? I don't like the sound of that. Slipping on her shoes, she yells goodbye to the otherwise empty house and opens the door to leave, letting the cool breath of fresh air in the hallway. A tuft of dark hair picking from the door frame tells me she's only just waiting for her outside. Good morning. Misha translates for me from beyond the doorway and she only turns around to give me a small wave. Even though it's different from her usual offhand readings in the smallest ways, there is an unmistakable hesitation there. It leaves me with a vaguely empty and distant feeling. Hey Chan, you're up early! Am I interrupting the conversation? I was trying to get Misha to teach me how to talk to you, but I guess I was being impatient, and it can wait. You two were planning on going shopping today anyway. Having Misha there, I forget to sign my words as I say them. Unfortunately, since Shazidi moved to fill the doorway, Misha is behind her. This brief misalignment in our positions means that what I am saying is totally lost on her. I don't understand you at all. There are things I would say that I can't put in a way she would understand, and there are entire conversations that she could have that would go right off my head. I to tell her now that it won't be that way for much longer. Instead, I just say never mind and tell him to have a good time, then wave them off. Seems like everyone's out for the day, so I sit down on the biggest and most comfortable looking chair in the living room with a book. Not a sign language book, but one of the novels I checked out of the library my first week. That was so long ago, I should really start chipping at that pile of books I borrowed. At least return them. Hell, oh, shit. Sixteen pages in, Jagura walks into the room. A stack of papers in one hand and his sword twirling idly like a baton in the other, casually shaking water from a recent shower from his hair. <laughs> then it's revealed, it's like, Boy, I saw what you were doing with my daughter the other day. <laughs> it's like, oh shit! Upon being seen doing something so ungentleman, uh, <laughs> ungentlemanly, he freezes like a deer in the headlights and slowly moves on to smoldering with powerful but baseless fury as he sits down on a couch a few feet away. This is only the third time I've met him. Well, he's only run him to three times, and I am already starting to feel nauseous on reaction. I guess in a way this could be considered a kind of charisma. I haven't even said anything, and he already seems less than pleased. It's likely a bad idea to provoke him, and just talking to him may count as provoking him. However, I can't help thinking of the alternative situations that could play out. Let's say I don't open my mouth at all and walk away, maybe to go read in my room or outside. That would definitely go down as an uncomfortable, well, unforgivable insult. He'd probably tell me to hold it and destroy me. Either way, not too polite on my part. What are you reading? A draft for my autobiography. It's the story of a man who wakes up to find an uninvited guest in his living room, sitting in his chair and reading a shallow literacy trick. Oh, that's why he's pissed off. I've barely started reading the book. I don't even have an opinion on it yet. I can already see how this conversation is going to play out, so I might as well try to steer it in a different direction. Where's Hideaki? You even ask questions rudely. Disgraceful. That aside, why would you even ask me such a stupid question? How would I know? Am I my son's keeper? 
Well, you are his dad, and it seems like he does live here, so... But I guess I can't say that, tempting as it is. I give up, but I already tried to make small talk with him and failed. It's like trying to talk to a brick wall that also hates you. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? That is my cue to leave and sift through my wallet to see if I have enough money to go to a movie. As I'm about to stand, I have second thoughts. I'm too tired to go through trying to smooth over my problematic situations by trying to continuously walk away from it. It's hypocritical of me to get upset at Misha for trying to defer things when I even run through my own girlfriend. When Jigoro attempts to stop me, I'm almost glad, though I no longer have uh, any intention to leave. Wait! He says that we have plenty of authority, but nothing else. As if it's just a particularly commanding afterthought. Only a very powerful or very arrogant person can tell someone to hold on in such a manner. I'm sort of impressed. You're on the student council with Shizune, aren't you? Where is your job there? I don't think there are specific roles other than president. Shizune is always trying to ram people up to help out here and there. Usually we might get like one person to pitch in, but otherwise the three of us do whatever needs to be done. It's crossed my mind a couple of times around when I first met her that Shizune's disquietly analytical stare might be because of her deafness, but it turns out it's a trait shared by everyone else in her family. That's okay with you. Why wouldn't it be? You, Shizun, and that pink hat girl. Is that really your entire student council? If we have a student council that small, they wouldn't even bother to hold elections. I'm gonna take a guess and say that you didn't join the student council, Shizuni. Draft you into it. You said you do not know exactly what your time is. That makes sense. I suppose if you weren't even elected, you couldn't be expected to know. After all, if you're not elected, you aren't really anything. No one's going to respect a student council like that. An unelected body of free people trying to sc round up the equivalent of temp workers. It must be a sorry school that three kids having a tea party can handle every issue. What's how small it is? Uh, what's how small it is have to do with anything? Student council gets things done, isn't that enough? It's not just a game, either. Maybe you should actually come to school one day. Shit, he's tempting fate here. <laughs> If you get there on the right days, you might even be able to see what Shizune is able to accomplish. Do you think that I have so much free time that I can afford to waltz over to your bootnecks and watch my daughter's feats of self? Ah, grand, 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 whatever. I've never been more disgusted in my life. What you're saying is that they might as well not have a student council, but the fact remains there is one. And she didn't get elected to it, and for it, it isn't a meaningless position. It actually works very hard for it. You sound like someone who voted for her. No, I wasn't there for that. Ha! You didn't even vote for her. Well, besides that, why don't you ask Hideaki about this? She didn't have started to be a high school student council president since middle school. She would have him read all her practice speeches, wasting his time. For what reason? This whole time, he hasn't even looked up from thumbing through his manuscript. It's getting increasingly frustrating. Because it isn't a game, we don't run school, but it's not like we're just playing at it and not taking it seriously. I wonder if it's so wrong to not be a purist. I mean, your school, really. Students there. I can already think of about a million things, you might say. I'm prepared for my heart to sink on hearing any of them. It's funny, they're probably things I've fought before. They don't even have cleaning duty. No, it's not what I expected at all. It's also wrong. If they do, I should know. I get to skip out on it since I'm in the student council. The concept of being wrong confuses Jigoro. I should take this opportunity to go on the attack. It's really odd that I'm thinking this way about a simple conversation. Sounds like the last time you were there was really some time ago. If you can literally write some memoirs, you can talk to Zuni now and then. Don't you think that she has stuff she's proud of? That's how young people are, we have things to be proud of. If you're writing an autobiography, you should get that. Such an opportunity, and I blew it. I don't know how I was expecting him to react. Maybe introspectively, but Jigoro only grows angrier by the second. I mean, what were you expecting him to freaking react as? Yet, as he does, he also seems calmer, in a way, more sure of himself and in control. Who do you think you are to assume that my life is so easy? You haven't even read my biography yet. You are able to tell me how I should handle all my affairs, including dealing with my old daughter. You should never, you could never understand. You haven't even wrote it. Well, you're not even going to be the one writing it. 
Even if I were to get up from this couch, walk over to you right now, and punch you in the forehead with brass knuckles, with a condensed edition of my life story on them, leave my body for being printed in your face, you would not understand. Twelve years, Zune did not even talk to me, even though I hired multiple tutors and interpreters of all sorts for her to try and get her to become normal. It isn't as simple as you think it is. She does not want to borrow with me, that's fine. Assume that's normal. When was the last time you talked to your parents? It has been a while, and I feel ashamed. Also, that he caught me then at how easily. He, I could have dropped my parents a phone call, or sent them an email, or even a letter, and haven't. This long journey makes me feel more ashamed. It's like, oh shit, man, he's just, like completely forgot all about his family, hasn't he? I mean, they never mentioned for the most part. The start of the, of the novel, and the, like, maybe one other point for a rap, and that's it. I thought so. If I wanted to see my parents, I couldn't. This is different. You aren't that far from her. It's one train right away. That's enough. No means no. You're very persistent. What it was about something that mattered. I can't see what you may have learned from my daughter aside from that and how to backtail people. Zari! The answer is yes. I wasn't as persistent or argumentative before meeting Shazini and Misha. After all, trying to meet them, I just experienced a small death. It's a mystery as to why I refused to join the student council in the first place. Possibly it was from trying to get away from their nagging so much that I was able to get my energy back. It's a good idea. I think again about why I'm still here. Arguing with Jagoro is pointless, yet I think I almost looked forward to it. And he's right, I cannot understand him. Even if uh, I did, he wouldn't care. I'm a louse that crawls on a whale, wholly insignificant. And, well, you could, you know, just like, get nihilistic on him, just like, you know what, Jagoro? We are all insignificant in the grand scale of things. We are simply small beings on a small insignificant planet in the middle of a solar system that is also insignificant within a galaxy among an expanding universe that's so big we cannot even begin to comprehend and fully understand it in our lifetime. Do you understand, Jigoro? You, like I, meaningless. <laughs> He's just like, shit, what the fuck are you doing there, boy? Still, I hate him. I don't know what I can do. A few months ago, I think I would have punched him and let the consequences play out as they may. Uh, uh, you'd be back in the hospital, that's for sure. Actually, you might even be dead because, uh, you know, the heart thing, and he wouldn't know about that and probably take it a bit far, so, uh, uh, that's probably not a good idea. But now I can't risk it. If he were to hit me back, he'd likely kill me. Heck, he even admits it. So in the end, the only thing I can do is look at Jigoro in silence, knowing that I have no reply and hate him and feel completely at a loss. Oddly, he takes it as defiance. Hmm, fine then, have fun with that! Picking up his sword and using it to pull himself to his feet, he turns and casually saunters out of the room. I want to throw my book after him, but I am happily happy to finally be alone, even if I'm not in the mood to read any longer. Can you imagine if, like, as he's leaving, he f actually does throw the book at him, you know, when he's leaving to go back to school. He's like, okay, I'll never have to see him again. <laughs> he comes to the school. He's like, oh, shit, well, it, that gave him a reason to go there. So now is, is it going to go back then to the school? Yep. Our return trip to the school keeps getting delayed in one way or the or another. Shizune and Misha come back so late that there's no use even leaving and we end up staying an all day. Oh come on! The morning after we miss the train by a single minute and then the next two don't arrive. We missed the fourth train because I wandered off to get a drink in the meantime. Shizune wasn't very happy about that. Oh come the fuck on man! I mean I know trains can be... well I don't use the train. I, I use buses whenever it comes to public transportation, and yeah, they can be pretty crap, but is there only one bus a day, well, one train a day then? Heck, don't they have local buses? I mean, buses can be kind of, you know, crap, because sometimes they'll just pass and the schedule can be all over the place, but surely they must have one. 